Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. As you guys can tell today in our uh, pesticide storage area, this is where we keep most of our pesticides and fungicides and all kinds of other um, fertilizers and all kinds of other stuff. And what I'm doing today is I have to uh, spray our trees. It's been a month already since um, I've sprayed that dormant oil on and the reason I couldn't spray, we usually like to spray during the tight cluster stage, pink, apple bloom, petal fall, and right now the, the the apples are already at petal fall stage, and the reason we couldn't spray the trees is because it rained. It was raining too much. We didn't have any free days. So tomorrow it's supposed to be tomorrow on Monday. It's supposed to be two days full of sunshine, no chance of rain. And then on Tuesday we're supposed to get more rain. So this is the perfect time. It's a uh, Saturday night, and you know most people are probably out partying and stuff, but not me. I gotta get the job done and spray the trees. I, what I'm doing today, since we still have the bees out in the orchard. I'm only spraying some fungicides, and then I'm spraying also I'm spraying some um, soy bor, which is a mac, um, micronutrient. It's a boron, it's a sodium bor borate. So what we're doing, I gotta spray the trees. I already mixed the chemical or the fungicides all together. Now I gotta pour them into the tank. But you guys stay tuned for the ride. And you guys, if you guys haven't, if you guys didn't see how the sprayer works. Go into the video, the day in the life of Farmer Dre, and I explain exactly how the spray works and how everything, how the whole spray works and how the whole, whole system works. So I'm gonna get to spraying, and you guys stay tuned. So what I'm doing here is uh, we have this fancy construction mixer, whatever. It works great in water, and I'm using our Dewalt drill here to uh, mix it up. And what I'm doing here, since most of our chemicals come in powder form, we don't like to put it in our sprayer as a powder because then it could clog up the injectors and all that stuff. So what I like doing is mixing with water. This is really high concentration, but I, what I do here is I just mix them up, get that all that powder dissolved, and ready to put in the sprayer. And for the guys, in, for, the, for the ones asking questions, I only use these five gallon buckets to mix chemicals and nothing only. So I actually have written on them, you know, chemical, chemical use only, so. And this is the Manco Zeb that I just put in here. It's a little thicker. I might have to add more water or just put them in the tank as that. I just don't want there to be any chunks of uh, dry stuff left. So, so it won't clog up the sprayer, the pump, and all kinds of cause all the problems down the road. So easy process. Just keep them mixing. So it is currently the next day. I wanted to come out in the orchard and show you guys, you know, it was dark when I was spraying. And I wanted to come out here and show you guys how the, the, the chemicals look on the trees. And there's a lot of talk nowadays of the size of the water droplet and how it, how it could affect your spray and how much to spray. So here's a leaf or on any leaf I choose here. So as you guys can see here, they're kind of speckled, kind of like, it, like they're wet. So with, with the fine mist when it comes, there's no, there's no water dripping, but you want that chemical to stay on there if it's a good mixture. So I really shouldn't be, you know, touching the leaves at all because they're, the, the chemical is still active on here. I'm going to show you guys a quick little orchard update. Those are, these are gala apples, and you can tell they're growing nicely. There's a few flower buds out here. So whenever the trees, whenever I come here with the sprayer, 
if you have if your sprayer is calibrated and properly working, you should only come to your at a at a certain pace. We like to uh, our sprayers calibrate at two and a half miles an hour, so that's how fast I was coming here, as you guys saw in the uh, yesterday what I was doing. So whenever I come through here, and the, the your sprayer should be so calibrated that there shouldn't be any water dripping from the trees. And you know, and if, if there was, I could see it, but there's nothing on here. If I'm looking at them, they are just you know it just missed them all. All the leaves are the same. If, and you could tell if your sprayer is uncalibrated and if you're not doing it right that at the end of the leaves there will be a lot of you know a lot of the chemicals still there the residue but so far the trees are actually looking pretty good and the spray our sprayer is calibrated correctly because all the leaves look the same we got the inside and there's a even the apples have a few that you know the chemical on there so what I did spray I didn't I forgot to mention this I sprayed some streptomycin which is antibiotic for fire blight we have the Jonathan blocks, those are very susceptible, and if you don't stay on the fire bite lane, um, the, you know, if, if you don't stay on top of fire blight, they'll just come out there and ruin, you know, it'll just, whenever it's hot and humid like the, it has been, it could just ruin the whole entire block of the apples that are, that are very susceptible. You know, ga uh, the galas, they're, they're moderately susceptible, so they're not as bad as the Jonathan's, but we gotta watch out the Jonathan's, especially on that fire blight, and I did spray some uh, man Manco Zeb for the leaf, for the leaves and the foliage, because if, to have a healthy fruit, you gotta have healthy leaves, and it takes 16 leaves to make one apple. So if you can imagine 16 leaves, there's a lot more than that, and you gotta have healthy leaves to make the healthy apples. So that's what we, we spray, and I know a lot of people have problems with uh, cedar apple rust. We spray the man Manco Zip for that. And I also used uh, some um, you know, macronutrients to get the, you know, the leaves healthy again. So what we're gonna do next is we gotta fertilize all these trees with that turkey manure, and the trees are actually doing pretty good. We gotta come through here with some uh, thinner now, with them seven, we gotta put seven, cause seven, the chemical seven, is the actual chemical inside seven is called carbaryl, and that puts out a, whenever we do spray that, this, at this stage, it actually thins out the weak apples. And let me show you guys here real quick, an example of, uh, like I was showing you guys, the king bloom, and then the side blooms whenever they do. So this is when they pollinated. Let me find a better better example here so here's a better example if it's not shaded so this is a this this is a king bloom right here they're the king apple they like to say it and then these two need to come off because they're not as gonna be as a big so whenever you put out that the seven you could actually come through here by hand and spray uh rip them off but you just want that one fruit on there so you can have big quality fruit so whenever you come through here i mean you could hand thin a whole block well, what's the point whenever you could do with chemical chemical so chemical, we gotta come through here next, fertilize them. We gotta thin them out and just keep them watched, keep them, keep the leaves healthy, the fruit healthy until harvest time in the spring or in the fall. It is spring now. So in the fall, gotta keep them healthy. These scales will be for us. We're in zone 6B, so they should be ready to go by the middle of August. So real quick, I'm gonna show you guys our new growth that have come since the, the trees that broke bud. We've got, this is where they broke but last, uh, this is, uh, since the winter time, and we've already got six to eight inches of new growth, you know, on the trees. So that's why staying on top of things and spraying the trees and watching your orchard for pests and diseases is so important because the trees grow so fast, and if you're not out here every day or, you know, every other day or as most as possible as you can, you could literally lose a whole orchard within a few years if you're not careful. So that's why, you know, there's a lot of talk and hate about using chemicals and pesticides and whatnot. But, you know, people, it's, it's easy to complain whenever they have a, a perfect fruit at the farmer's market or where at. You know, if you, there would be a worm inside of apple, people would start complaining like, well, you know, they'll start complaining, they're no, they wouldn't be happy, but they don't understand that farming nowadays is kind of hard if you, uh, if you don't use chemicals and pesticides. So that is pretty much it for today, just a quick little orchard update slash, you know, spraying the trees. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, like this video. And if you guys have any questions, comments about using, you know, using pesticides or, you know, how stuff works, I'm going to try my best to answer them. You know, I consider myself a pro here. I'm, I'm the guy in charge of spraying all the trees here on our farm because I got my a restricted pesticide license. So I went to a training and we get inspected by the USDA and they send it send, send off the, to the EPA and the FDA and make sure our whole orchard is under, you know, under control and we're not doing stuff we're not supposed to. So if you guys have any questions like that, let them down below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. But thanks for watching. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and like, like, subscribe, and comment down below if you guys have anything. And we'll see you next time. You guys have a good day.